So this is uh, about a study, a preliminary study, uh, about how to use network models to analyze old Chinese rhyme data. And the idea was somehow, I mean, I think it's an obvious idea to use network models, but um, I never had time to actually look into this. And uh, But recently, for this workshop, I then um, realized that I, I had some pressure. So I would just um, code the data and make some first applications and write some stuff. And I hope I can show especially that computers can be useful for our research in historical linguistics in general, but also for these specific cases, even if we do not believe in what computational methods what they give us. So if we do not believe in any of them. But um, they can be useful to assist um, hypothesis finding or hypothesis checking. And um, I want to basically focus on that. So, but um, okay, you, uh, network models, this is all about rhymes and networks. And let's start with rhymes. And I take the opportunity to take my favorite uh, rhyme. Uh, lose yourself in your music. The moment you own it, you better never let it go. You will only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow this opportunity comes once in a lifetime. So um, why do I take this? Because it's interesting regarding the rhyme analysis. If I was now given an exam and a teacher would ask me, like, how do you give me the rhymes in this poem or in this whatever we call it? Then I would give the following analysis. I would say that music rhymes with on it, go with blow, shut with nut. The question is, of course, maybe teachers would criticize that I rhyme ick with it, but um, Germans would rhyme employ and deny. Um, the question is, what is better? I don't know. But um, this is what I would give here. Now, what about networks? Like, this is the rights, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to bring this up. <laughs> um, a network is a simple data structure. We can think of that as a data structure which has a node which represents an object and an edge which represents relations between objects. We can tag or label nodes as shown here by using different colors. So we can say this is the red node, the blue node, we give them names, or we do something. With the edges, we can do similar things. We can label them and rate them. So this is bigger or thicker than the other one. So we say like this is a stronger connection, a stronger relation between the objects. And we can also direct them. But directed networks won't be used in this application because we don't have direct networks of rhymes, as you will see later. But this is just to illustrate. And it's actually really simple, but the good thing about networks is that there are many applications, both for visualization, both for analysis, that we can use in order to get more once we have the network data. Now, how do we get from rhymes to networks? If we take a um, stanza from the shooting and we mark the rhyme patterns as here in red, and we say these, this character rhymes with this, with this, um, then we can just create, simply say, a character is a node, and the connections are just when the words rhyme. So if they rhyme in a poem, if we say that they rhyme, then we make a first connection in the network. If we add more stanzas of the shooting to this, and, and again, like identify what rhymes and what not, then we can make connections. Because in this test, we have both the character for s and s, 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 yeah, s, and we would then just say like these also, like this occurs twice, here and here, and then we can connect them Oh, so this is the simple idea how to use the shijing, how to make a network out of the shijing rhymes. So how to construct such a network? Um, first I had to prepare the data. Um, the starting point um, was constructed, uh, are the rhyme annotations given in the appendix of Baxter 92. The data was not digitally available, so I transferred the annotations by Baxter to a digital version of the shijing. I took Project Gutenberg. Um, we can have all problems, but I couldn't crawl the data from ctext.org because they would block me. And um, so I would just take this as a starting point. Then I would go through the Baxter's book and always annotate whenever something right. Um, the digital version was corrected during this <coughs> process where, so I would find certain things where Project Gutenberg doesn't give the right character. Not always. I was, a bit, I, I was a bit under time pressure, so I was working every day half an hour in order to not get too bored of this. But um, after one month, then I would correct certain cases there. And furthermore, I have also a digital collection of most of the old Chinese reconstructions given in the new OCBS system provided by Laurent. And this is what I have. 
Now, I organized the data um, in such a way that, um, as you can see here, so first we have the poem, I mean, this is something that we know, we have the stanza, something that we also know, one, 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 two, and something. And then um, I annotated something which I call a section. This is actually the things that are followed by a comma or a dot in the, um, in the old Chinese text. For the simple reason that these are the potential locations, so the end of a section, if we strike off things like um, prefix or the, like the things like the affixes, which they sometimes add to the um, uh, to the poems if we strike them off, then these are the potential locations where we would find the rhyme words. So we have a, we could also use this to automatically try and detect what rhymes, but I wouldn't wouldn't do that because I took the annotations. So if a section contained a rhyme word according to Baxter's annotation, this was noticed as such. And if I detected further rhyme words, I had reasons to disagree with Bex's annotation. This was noted in an alternative annotation. For each section, I tried to identify the old Chinese readings of the OCBS system, but uh, this was not possible in all cases. There are some 400 readings are missing, and I still did not have time to check them. So the first step I then made was making a little app, because nowadays everybody makes apps, and uh, I also wanted to make an app. And I made this uh, app, which I called, uh, um, actually I didn't give it a real name, but um, you can access this here via this link, and I will just show how it looks. So as you can see here, we have um, all the sections, like for each word, like where they occur. Like for the words, we have them sorted here. You can go for the Hanse, and then we have the Pinyin, and then we have a Gloss, then we have Middle Chinese, where I had it, I mean, there are some things missing. Old, um, old Chinese Baxter cigar, then I have Han um, Yu, and what I got from the, uh, from the metadata. Now the cool thing about this whole stuff is the following. If I go for, for example, you can search, I can search for a character like, I need to switch to Chinese, I want to see all the instances of war in the data, then I find them here. And um, now we can actually look in the poems where it occurs by clicking here, and then you see the rhyme words are annotated here. You see, like here, it occurs in this position. It rhymes with so, and here are the reconstructions. And here is the next stanza. And I have this color schema in order to uh, make it easier for the people to detect the rhymes. I think this is already really useful, at least for beginners. So um, for me, it was useful afterwards to see what happened because um, when looking at the poem, usually we, it is difficult for the people who do not really know all the classic text, like the words or something, to, to identify the rhymes. But this was the first step, um, just to um, illustrate this. Now, getting back to the... Now, um, the network I was talking about, how did I reconstruct it? I took all characters which occur in the shitting in a position that was annotated as rhyming, according to the next annotation. They are the notes, and the links between two characters are drawn whenever they are annotated as being rhyming in a given poem. And the number of instances in which two characters rhyme in the separate stanzas were counted and assigned as the edge weights of the network. And note weights were derived from the number of times the rhyme words occurred in the shooting in a potential rhyming position. The data was then further normalized. We need to normalize when working with this kind of data by counting every pair of identical lines only once, identical sections only once, in order to avoid that phrases veer too much weight. We know that there are many phrases in the shitting which are repeated across poems, and we shouldn't count them two times or three, because then we think that these words are really strong connected, but maybe it's just because the people would imitate um, the people who started to make it. So in order to, um, this is easy to do by just counting it once. So we count them once. But with less, um, what I was thinking then later, of, I should further normalize this, because if we have a poem or a stanza in which three words rhyme all with each other, then I would make three links between A, B, A, C, and B, C. This may be a problem, because we could assume that people who write a long stanza and want to have all words to rhyme, they get sloppy. They get tired, and then they think, okay, this doesn't really rhyme, but I still add it here because then it makes sense for this case. And we can see this also in hip hop. So, um, in order, so we should, in order to account for that one, should maybe divide by the number of uh, a group, by the size of the group. But I didn't do that because I, this was only recently that I detected this error. But I think it is um, still useful. So we have this certain bias, but um, we can work with it. And now, regarding the analysis of the shitting network, let's uh, first look at the bird's eye view. This is quite interesting in my opinion, because uh, we have almost a small world graph. A small word graph is one where you can get from any node to any other node. So we have this disconnected components, many characters 
uh, completely, but we have this large cluster of things that are all interrelated. We could now, what do we do with such a network? Actually, it's okay, we could say, okay, well, let's look, let's zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, then we can see <coughs> whether we see something. But it's not really interesting, actually. I realize that it's not really, it's rather difficult to find anything here in structure. So we need something more. <coughs> Possibility, since we have the labels and we can visualize them by using certain labels and giving them colors, we could say, let's take the five vowels of old Chinese, or the six vowels. <laughs> this was, a, this was an intended talk. <laughs> and let's color it accordingly. <laughs> and what you can see is that we see some structure emerge. We see that um, usually it's so, but when we see something that this network has an internal structure, so it is not that this network is something is complete nonsense what we see here. And once we have something like that, the small world network, almost, and uh, which we would call where we have large, we will also identify clusters. And these are actually the things we are interested in because these are the groups where we might then have a reconstruction of a rhyme group. And clusters <coughs> are then actually, which I will talk in a minute about that, um, are what we can, can then try to identify here. So. I looked at transitions between rhyme groups because I was interested in that, so how many cases of A ah and A ah do we have on something like that. But as you see here, this doesn't give us anything in this way. So what I was doing was maybe probably there was some bias in the coding or I was, um, the, the approach like that, that doesn't work by just looking for the same rhyme, agglomerating all nodes into one rhyme group and then seeing how much they interfere. There is, um, it's getting really messy here. What we can also do, and this is maybe more interesting, you will see it if you look at a smaller set of the data, is making computing how often a certain rhyme group rhymes inside and how often it rhymes with other words. So rhyme group here meaning um, old Chinese Max and Sagar reconstruction. And if you look at that, without tones here though, but tones should be, uh, I mean, uh, glottal stop and um, S uh, suffix, um, which it's not ideal, but it's just a first, uh, a first step. You can then see like, how often do they rhyme, and whenever they have a really highly red color, then it would mean that they rhyme in, in themselves, so it's a red established group. We see some spots here where it is almost they rhyme more often with others than with themselves. So in these cases, actually, we might start looking for whether we find some patterns that we should revise, maybe, or we can find an explanation in the approach that I use. So, but even better is searching for communities. Uh, communities are actually the most interesting thing, in my opinion, when doing network analysis. And um, just to explain quickly what a community is, I mean, you may know what a community is, but it comes from social network theory and the idea. So people are interconnected. So we have some people here, and the people, they know each other, X knows Y and Y knows Z. And, um, if we look at the connection now, we can actually identify certain connections that are more important, that are more inside a group than outside. And we can show this, for example, like this. In this case, I would say that this is a group, and this is a group, and these nodes are less important. Maybe they just know each other, like coincidentally. By this, we can then split a network into two communities, in this case, and label them accordingly. We can also give them labels like Chelsea and Liverpool, or we can assign numbers to them, like one and three. And um, this was last Saturday. <laughs> By using this, um, I was then applying this community algorithm to, uh, um, to the network. Um, so uh, I was using Infomap, which is, in my opinion, a really nice algorithm. Um, by Ross van den Bergström from 2008. And it is a fast community detection algorithm with a very good performance. So in my opinion, in my experience also working with other data, it always leads, leads really nice results. It handles weighted nodes and weighted <coughs> edges, and we have both of them here in the network, and uses random walks through the network in order to determine the best partition into communities. The results can be, again, expected in another app, <coughs> and I will show this now. And I hope we can, I can actually make it a bit bigger. So I would just plot all the results. So the, the whole application, or I, would just, I will just show this late. Uh, so in, because now let's look at the, at the big picture of the. So we make this analysis of the, of the network and uh, split it into communities, split it into groups. The question is, what do we get? And if we look at this, then this is what we get. 
So you can see we have large clusters, and we, but actually we have almost 400 different clusters. So the things are, and this is actually only showing a connection from one cluster to the other ones, and they are all still interconnected. So searching for structure here is still difficult. What, what do I find here? It's um, just, I, maybe it looks oppressive or something when looking at a network like that, having a nice visualization, but um, it just doesn't really have, so I also looked into uh, what they actually show. They, they are not necessarily overlapping directly with the OCBS reconstruction of the rhyme, so not, not necessarily means the same rhyme in the OCBS system could be um, split into two communities just because these words, but which also makes sense because we know that not all words like will be used in the same context in order to rhyme. Mm -hmm. um, so this is why the interpreting the data is difficult because a community, as I said, so a community identified by informa is not necessarily homogeneous since rhyming is also not homogeneous. We have cases, especially when a character occurs only <coughs> once in the shooting, then it will be maybe assigned to some place where we do not want to see it. A split of words with the same rhyme group into two communities does not imply that they do not rhyme. And we always need to get back to the real data and see uh, what is going on there. Now, this is why the this is why I think that the app is useful, because here we can search for certain parts. So um, it is really preliminary. So I can, for example, I will just show that I can, for example, say like, give me rhymes, oh, not in Chinese. Rhymes equals <coughs> an, an, and I, and then I press on OK, and it filters all the instances where we have any of these, like in in the data. And we can see here, for example, here is a group community 16, and now we can click and see all the characters where they are here. We can see the stanza where they occur, and we can check this with the other app. So if I click on this and open the link in a new tab, then I see in which poem it occurs. I think this is also useful just for checking the um, specific instances. Okay, now getting back to... So what I was then doing is just breaking it down. So I was looking at only certain cases, and what I wanted to look at was uh, the R coder, because this is something that is new compared to 1992, and um, this is something that, which may be worth looking from this perspective, because the rhymes may give us some evidence here. And here's again like the same what we had before, like, um, inter, like inside the group, outside the group, how do they rhyme? And we find that um, we have certain well-established cases, like I, an, and R seem to be rather clear here, but we have also cases where it is less clear, so R seems to rhyme more often with N than with itself. These are our cases we need to look in detail. So this is also what I, so I'm, I'm not claiming that we just use these things and show like, look at this, but uh, that one goes back in detail and look at, say, at, at the cases, what, what is going on there. But now, an interesting case, just to illustrate that this is, can be useful or, um, to advertise it a little bit. Because uh, look at, for example, at R, I, and an at this split, and we look at the network here, then you can actually see that it seems to have some structure. So we have a cluster here, we have a cluster here, and we have a cluster here. And here I use the annotation of an R, I in old Chinese Baxter saga, as Laurent provided me with. And um, this is only the first one where I was ignoring the fact that um, in the book, actually, um, they have this nice practice of showing uncertainties. I was then, here I do not, I just ignore all uncertainties and say I take them as granted. But if we add the uncertainties, uh, the picture changes somewhat, and we see that the structure we have with I rhymes being over here, the green rhymes being potentially over here, the blue rhymes is R, which should be a transition group, um, occur here, makes much more sense. So with the uncertainty, adding the uncertainty, and the, the uncertainty are actually cases where we can now use this analysis in order to provide additional evidence in order to resolve them. So having something like this potential split, but of course it doesn't mean that, um, for example, this green character over here, that, that it isn't really no un or something, it maybe is, it is, because it only occurs once it's isolated. So we need to be careful when looking at the data. But now, again, the same view, but now we use the community detection algorithm and how it splits off this, and it splits it off into separate cases, as you see here again. And here again, I don't show the unclear cases, 
And um, if you look at this cluster, for example, and I now go to the unclear view, then you can see that all the green cases, which were annotated as potentially, un potentially uncertainties, are getting yellow. And we have them only surrounded by blue ones. If you look at for closer, then we have these characters here. And now, provided that we are really sure, that the reconstruction is really sure about whether Shun should really have an R coder, and we had the uncertainties, we could make the conclusion that we say, okay, maybe the whole cluster is R, should be reconstructed as R. And here is a point where the detailed analysis, of course, and I'm only showing the preliminary stuff, could then potentially yield, uh, yield an improvement of the system by resolving the uncertainties. Um, this is all I wanted to show, uh, only a short outlook. Um, where are we with this? Um, well, RIME analysis based on the network approaches is still strictly e experimental. We need to enhance the data, missing readings, swap lines in the shitting text. Where I have all kinds of stuff, like uh, the version I was using was not particularly good. And we need to enhance the models, better normalization, as I mentioned before. Um, but already at this stage, it turns out to be useful to inspect the automatically identified clusters in times of doubt regarding the reading of a certain character. I think it's generally useful to make use of interactive visualization techniques when dealing with huge amounts of data. And tools like the Shijing Ryan browser are especially useful for beginners, but probably also for experts. Question? And where could we be? Imagine a world in which we have large collections of rhyme networks on all kinds of poetry, ranging from Shakespeare via Bob Dylan up to Eminem. Imagine we could gather important, we could then gather important information on rhyming behavior, both cross-cultural and culture specific. We could track the emergence of hip-hop or the degradation of rhyme patterns in modern poetry. Or we could even we could even try to test the influence of the Judas call on Bob Dylan's rhyming practice. Imagine seriously that we could carry out large-scale comparisons on rhyming practice in different stages of Chinese. That we could propose transparently our individual assessments of what we think rhyme in pieces of old po Chinese poetry. And that we could trace the history of Chinese and poetry networks. And I think, doesn't that sound like it could be interesting? Okay, um, thanks to Laurent Sagan and William Bexer, perhaps for discussion tips, ideas and data. Um, thanks to Baudet and Eminem Shakespeare and all the other poets out there. Thanks to you for your attention. <coughs>